Hey guys, you're watching Explore the Weird. If you're into creepy and weird, you clicked on the greatest channel. We have a gang that is growing, watching videos just like these, and we would like you to join it too. Did you smoke that like button on the way in? Well, guess what? That means you're already a goon, so I'm not looking for you, but we love the goons as well. We're trying to grow the gang. Hit that subscribe. There is only one way up, and it is with you, so why don't you join? Um, guys, I I thought I was done, and then literally my wife hit me with, wait, I got even more to show the goons, and I don't even know what part is. Is this part six, part seven, part five? I don't know. It, it's been wild. I feel like now my entire life just revolves me around, um, you know, just listening to my wife tell me that she found another video for the goons to watch, and I'm like, all right, I love it. Now I had less work for me, so... <laughs> I'm all for it. Thank you, Emily, yet again, and let's get right into it. I'll tell you what I learned in Mind Mastery School. And keep in mind, the man, Mind Mastery teacher was a former NASA scientist. The sun, he says, allegedly, is not a ball of fire. Matter of fact, the sun is not hot at all. The sun and all the stars that we see out there are black holes. Now, this goes back to manifestation they're black holes with with a strong gravitational field gravity is the only force that's capable of attracting trapping and distorting light they're black holes with light trapped inside of them the gravitational pull of the earth is pulling the light out of them and then once those light rays hit the earth's atmosphere the friction heats them up and that's what makes it hot he pointed out he said have you ever seen Star, like when you see a picture from on the surface of the moon, you don't see stars because the, the, the whole sky is just right. black. Because once you leave the Earth's atmosphere, you don't see the light. You see the light whenever those light rays hit the Earth's atmosphere. Right. You see the light whenever the light rays hit the Earth's atmosphere, but what causes the light for the other black holes? And I thought black holes don't even have light. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. It sounds like this guy knows. He's like, listen, buddy, someone told me this is how it is. I'm like, oh, yeah, really? But, like, there's there's holes. There's holes here. Um, yeah, very interesting uh, mindset and view. I'm a little skeptical, but I believe, you know, maybe I'm not that woke yet to understand his uh, what he's trying to say the sun is because... Regardless of whether it emits heat or not, um, I feel very hot when it's a sunny day. So light being, I mean, even even a general light bulb generates heat, you know? So it's like, there is heat, right? It's an energy, even being a light, right? Distributing light would be, I, I don't know. What am I trying to say here? All right. Interesting. We're already starting strong here. So crazy to me. There's actually scientific proof that humans are not physical beings and that in fact, nothing in our universe is physical or solid. This is a picture of a quark. So quantum physics tells us that everything is fundamentally made up of atoms. Everything in our universe is made up of atoms that are made up of electrons, neutrons, and protons. And protons and neutrons are made up of quarks and electrons are made up of leptons. But what are quarks and leptons made of? They're made of nothing. Quarks and leptons are just pure energy. Quarks and leptons are fast moving points of pure energy. They're made up of literally nothing. They are nothing. So that means that at the fundamental core of the atom and therefore at the fundamental core of everything in our universe, there is no material there. It's just pure energy. It's energy vortices. Energy is only transformed. It's Energy is only transformed. It's not created nor destroyed. So these quarks and stuff are always just present and they're just constantly moving and turning into different elements and atoms. Oh my God, that is crazy. I didn't even know that, but that is quite interesting. Um, 
yeah so literally they came out of nothing we literally came out of nothing energy is literally made out of nothing oh my god what does this even mean so i remote viewed what happened in the mall in miami on january 1st and here's what i saw i saw three aliens appearing in the middle of the mall and as they appeared and it seemed like they just teleported or appeared there uh, a few people start uh, saw them appear and started freaking out and basically yelling and running away from the scene uh, a lot of people saw and heard those people freaking out and they started screaming and running. A lot of people didn't know what they were running from or why they were running, but there were core people who saw and witnessed that. Um, then I saw all the and um, even like high ranking agents coming in and surveying the scene, um, things like taking a look at the security footage they did, and also trying to get as many names and information from the people who were on the scene at that time. Wait, so, so I, I want to know more. I feel like you just left us hanging here. What the heck? All right. So this person is a remote viewer and I recently learned about remote viewing watching the History Channel. I got to tell you, it sounds like it's a real thing. <laughs> Supposedly the government hired uh, psychics that could do uh, remote viewing and what remote viewing is, is like the ability to be in like a confined space away from something else and have the ability to um, see uh what another entity in a whole different place is seeing or experiencing and these guys will be able to draw out like entire uh people drawings even things on a piece of paper just from like closing their eyes and thinking about like that space so i guess this is one of those remote viewers and she's saying that aliens were in miami and i did uh look at the miami incident myself you know i quadruple uh, checked it myself and I went hey it looks like it was a bunch of kids uh, that potentially got into a fight but maybe I'm misinformed and the remote viewer knows something that uh, I have been um, glossing over because you know the media got to me the fake news got to me Teddy it wasn't actually kids fighting there was aliens and then those aliens came in transported out of nowhere and they had to be um, you know, the big guys came in and made us delete all that evidence. So imagine, bro, in Miami, you're not telling me a single camera caught that alien. Show me the proof. That's all I want. Oh, they made us delete it all. Really? Really? In the age of TikTok, Instagram, uh, YouTube, they made you delete it all. Get the hell out of here. Where is our guy? Where is our savior that's going to expose everything and tell us how it is? That's what I want. You ask Alexa as of today. Alexa, what's going to happen with the 2024 election? And it says there will be no election. And I've had people at the gas station two days ago. I got a bunch of text messages and calls. And my wife asked me about it because her friends and people are asking her. And we had some friends over the house last night. They were asking me about it. So the buzz is out there that there won't be a 2024 election. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm saying... We're not in normal situation anymore. We're not in Kansas, as they say, anymore. Sure, this would never work. Let's play the clip I just talked about with Alexa, where the man asked the machine yesterday, what's happened with 2024 election? Hey, want to hear some Alexa, who will win the next American election? The 2024 American election will not take place. There will be no winner. War Powers Resolution of 1973 or the War Powers Act will be invoked by the act of war with Russia and China. Once an invoke, the standing party will retain and remain in power. Wait, what the heck? Is this real? Can they really? No, no, no. Biden, I'm sorry. I, I don't think it's going to be you, buddy. I'm sorry. You're doing the thing Trump did when, you know, it's like, hey, potentially, you know, there's a... Uh, there's a chance that, sir, we're going to have to let Biden in. And, you know, Trump tried to stay in that White House as long as he could. Maybe Biden's now realizing, oh, God, oh, God. And I'm not choosing any political sides. Pure speculation here. You guys know me. I'm very unbiased politically or try to be. Uh, have you guys figured me out yet? Oh, Teddy's this. No, no. Well, you're wrong. I'm nothing. I'm unbiased. <laughs> All right, let's keep it going. There have been civilizations far advanced beyond where we are. 
when they did the, the Mars images and they found that there were these obelisks and strange looking objects on Mars. They were very ancient, but we're talking millions of years old, millions. It's been pixelated out for the public, but there are structures there. And I was out in California after I had disclosed this to some people and a man came up to me from JPL, Jet Propulsion Labs. He knew who I was and said, Dr. Greer, here's the issue. You're right, those exist, but we can't disclose that. I said, why? It's not an operational ET device. It's not, you know, it's old. He says, yes, but you don't understand how powerful the that this information is. I said, why? He says, if this was disclosed, it would collapse the fundamentalist orthodox belief systems of every religion on earth. I said, what? This science and this evidence is being kept secret for religious reasons he says yes man before governments religion played a big part right it was oh we let's ask the church what to do and then the church started taking all the artifacts and then now the church more powerful and they have all these artifacts at the vatican and you're like damn it we should have never listened to them in the first place what was their agenda and i'm not trying to discredit any religion all uh, countries have gone through this where some empire of sorts has taken uh, artifacts of another uh, countries and kept them. So I'm not singling anybody out. But this guy is quite interesting. Dr. Uh, Guerrero, I think he said. So um, he has seen Mars and he has seen structures on Mars. And I am one of the average Joe's average user that has not had that experience so i have a, have to take his word for it similar to how i take bob lazar's word for it i've seen this guy around he seems to have everything in order um and his credentials check out uh and i'm not the only one multiple people have checked him out right so it does appear that maybe if there are uh photoshopping pictures from mars in order to hide those structures in order to protect our religious beliefs Maybe they are, man. Why? Who's to say they're not? Have you been to Mars? Have you seen what's there? Do you have pictures? Can you show us proof? Do you have your own telescope that you built out with your own money? And now you're <laughs> going to expose the truth so that the governments aren't going to tell us? Here it is, guys. Entire cities on Mars. We were once there and we had to go to Earth. And now we need to get off Earth and go somewhere else. Oh, boy. I'm ready for it all. Just let it happen. Please. Please. The idea to understand is that there is a high probability above 90% of a major contact event happening somewhere around your year of 2026 and 2027. That will change everything and the way you look at life and the way you connect to the stars. So be prepared for the idea of an upliftment of vibration, a recognition of awareness and awakening to the idea that you are part of a galactic family which is imminent, not too far away. 2026, eh? Well, you know what? I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. If we're part of a galactic family, I want to know who the other beings are. We're two years away from that. Hey, I, and I, I know the goons have told me about this guy. He's something impersonating or... Uh, he had he has someone over over him dave or something oh my god i'm i'm ruining it for the goons i'm sorry bashar bashar there it is he's channeling some guy named dave or something bashar channeling some guy named dave yeah so yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry the goons i feel so bad oh teddy we keep telling you and you keep messing up the guy's name i just know he does the sign i know him as the weird illuminati guy uh sign guy so um I'm not saying weird in a bad way. Weird is good. Weird is a good thing. All right. Oh, by the way, are you enjoying Explore the Weird? Did you smoke that like on your way in? Oh, you're already a goon. Okay. I was just checking. Why are you not a goon, man? Come on. Come on. Don't be that guy. Smoke that like button. Smoke that like button. Just make it happen. Um, yeah. Interact with the video. It helps us out. Like, grow in the algorithm. You know? You see my face? Click on my face. You're like, ooh, I know that Indian man. <laughs> Um, yeah, still quite interesting, and uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to be part of a bigger uh, family, galactic family. All in for the same thing. We're fighting against the other aliens, Teddy, and now you guys have the power to do it. I'm ready, buddy.
little mouse. I don't understand what was so crazy about that. It was just a holographic projector. It was just a. Pro it was, I've seen this. So the fog is basically the screen, and then the projectors use the fog as their screen to show their uh, animations and whatnot. So I think this is okay. I think this is normal. They're saying Project Bluebeam. Project Bluebeam, dude. Have you ever been outside? Go. Have you seen that billboards have been adapting? Did you know China already had these? We're just getting them now here. They were they were living this years ago. Man. Next, we're going to get this 6G. And we're going to find out Korea's been at 11G for years now. Damn it, we're never going to catch up. In the United States, the Supreme Court has ruled that vaccinated people worldwide are products. They are now patented goods. According to U.S. law, which can be verified... People who have been vaccinated no longer qualify as humans, and therefore they can no longer be categorized as human beings. In essence, this means that those vaccinated are subject to national or international law. Since 2013, all people vaccinated with genetically modified mRNAs are legally transhuman and legally identified as transhuman then uh, they no longer enjoy any human or other rights of a state. This applies worldwide because GenPoint technology patents are under U.S. jurisdiction and law where they were registered. So, yes, this exists, but it is yet another form of dividing all of us from each other. And um, I certainly address all people. I address the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, and uh, we're all in this together. And uh, our hope is that we can retain humanity uh, in whatever way we can as this huge uh, onslaught. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna say it loud and clear, you're all human beings, whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, and I don't care. I don't care if you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, and I don't care um, if you have a preference if people are vaccinated or unvaccinated. I don't care about your feelings. You know, you are your own health um, conscious individual. If you feel you need to get a vaccine and, and you're worried about, oh my God, I'm gonna turn into a transhuman if I get a vaccine, that is on you. Guys, in the end, you know, the the population is going to continue whether you get vaccinated or not. Um, there is nothing that is going to, yeah, you know, I'm going to come out and be like, oh, my God, you got vaccinated. Now you're not human and now you can't reproduce. And now that's it. You know, I'm not that type of uh, individual. I want the uh, species to continue on. So regardless of what this woman says, hey, they have this patented. You're not a human being. I don't care what the classification is. I'm going to be waiting for the galactic family and joining the galactic family in 2026. Bashar told me, man. <laughs> so, um, no, all jokes aside. But, yeah, uh, not too worried about this. We're all human beings. We're goon gang strong. So we're going to keep it going. Are we still paying for water? Like, here I am right now. Uh, next to this waterfall in Chicago, this fountain, mm -hmm. and Lake Michigan, it's, the air is very humid. So that's going to mean there's a lot of water that's going to be in the atmosphere. And so what I've done is I've created a technology that allows you to pull that moisture, to condense that moisture out of the air the same way that you take a glass in the middle of the summertime and you put that uh, cold glass, that cold bottle of Coke on the table. You've all done it. And that, and that bottle of coke just continues to sweat, right? Yes. Well, with that picture that you see of the machine right there pushing that water out, that machine does that using a mechanic, using mechanical techniques that I've created over the years to efficiently pull that moisture out of the air uh, uh, with a lower energy consumption than you can use, than is needed to pull it out of the ground. 
So basically that box that you see in that picture, you can sit it right here and everybody in this park in uh, Chicago could drink from, from that water for the next forever. Now this box that we are looking at, it's solar powered, I would imagine? Absolutely. It's solar powered, but also what I did was I, uh, the big box that you see, I put on there a, uh, a generator. So it's got its own internal generator in case you don't have solar power. So basically you could take that box anywhere. You could drop it where you need it in the world and you could turn it on and you could produce water. And we're, we've already done that. We did it in Flint, Michigan, and we did it on the island of Vieques in Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. Ran it on solar power, and we produced enough water for 15,000 people to drink without the need of FEMA having to ship water in to Vieques. And we did that on solar power. There are people who have never really drunk their water from their faucets. They have lived for decades on bottled water. And you are making water accessible. And I think it's something that people take for granted, the water that we drink all day or the half a bottles of water that we throw away. People around the world do not have it. And, and this water that's generated, does it have to be processed in any way once it's gathered or you take it as is? in terms of just the, what, what is the process that it goes through in order to make it usable, if there is one? Oh, it, when the machine is, when, when the machine is, is, when I deploy a machine and it's fresh, it's brand new, it's clean, all the filters are clean, I can drain the water directly off the coil. Oh my God, this is just condensation, right? Condense or moisture in the air, and this guy made an efficient way to collect it, but like the units seem big um i feel like the price could be a little bit high there as well and i'm not sure if it can just last forever how long can you just keep sucking moisture out of the air i guess forever really it's all around you so in hot humid places he's saying he can just keep getting you drinkable water i mean i've also fell for you know what is it theranos where a lady once told me hey with one drop of blood i can run entire lab test results and then you actually signed up for the program and you ended up getting the regular uh needle in your arm anyway and it wasn't a drop of blood so uh maybe this guy's just all sm uh, smoke i don't know what his background is i don't know what caused him to make this device it's, I'm, i need more i need more inf information is this um, have, have you goons looked into this? Is this something that is uh, real and really being used in, in the world? And, you know, FEMA is uh, uh, being outdone by this unit? I don't even know what this guy's name is. But, yeah, quite interesting. Quite interesting indeed. Hey, TikTok. Just a quick update. It's uh, Saturday, I believe. And uh, here's the truck I've been driving for the last few days uh, for Wilson Logistics. Um, this trailer just uh, was assigned to us from Kraft over at the Kraft uh, Foods plant and we're delivering it here to what's called the Springfield Underground. And that is, as you can see behind me, this giant, giant cave that's big enough to house hundreds of these trucks and trailers. There's a train track running through here. Just to give you an idea, back here there's a regular sized truck see how tall that is up there um it's just incredible anyway having a great time learning lots talk to you soon So deep underground military bases, dumbs, and this guy, I guess, was delivering to an underground base. And uh, I, that's just wild. I didn't know they had that much food stored away. But hey, if truly there is an apocalyptic event, 
talk about apocalyptic events. I recently saw another thing on TikTok that was like all these billionaires are making underground bunkers like they're preparing for an apocalyptic event. And now we're in 2024 where we've had heard all the theories. This is going to be the year it finally ends. This is the year of um, another virus, another lockdown, another this earthquake, tsunamis, whatever it may be. Bring it all on. No election. I'm ready for it all. But like the whole bunker thing and all these billionaires um building bunkers it does it's like mark zuckerberg uh oprah already had one i think elon got one now um just random guys just randomly getting bunkers now uh, it's just I mean, joe rogan probably has one now too so yeah quite interesting uh find here uh, makes you wonder makes you wonder indeed okay so i've been asked by quite a few people if i'm going to cover the whole miami mall incident i actually did cover this with my email subscribers i do a free energy report that goes out every single week so definitely get on the list and you can receive those free energy reports every monday but i will still share here what i shared with them so of course i channeled the response to this from the the council for humanity which is a council that i work with a lot um, it's a very multi-dimensional council with lots of different kinds of beings that are on it. But in this particular instance, it was a Pleiadian female leader named Aja that came forward to describe what happened. There were a couple of teenagers that brought into the mall a small, flat kind of disc um, piece of equipment. They set it down in a very busy area, possibly a food court area, and set it off. Now, what people believe was a portal maker because they saw an image rise above it of a portal and a creepy creature crawl out was actually a hologram projector, something that can be bought easily online and even programmed to show whatever scene you choose. Now, of course, everyone that saw this went into absolute panic and hysteria, rushing for the exits, and the teenagers actually picked it up and walked with it behind the crowd, which made it appear as if these huge creatures were following after the crowd. These teens were not black ops, shadow government, or any other kind of dark agenda connection. But there's more to say, so check out part two. I already like part one. I love that it was a clear explanation. Now the Miami incident don't seem so crazy because I had seen the teenager reference and had seen like videos of teenagers running and like something of that so the projector theory does kind of make a little bit more sense than like one of the other videos we watched about the miami one where the lady just before this was like yo uh, three aliens just came out of nowhere right like the projector and we've seen an example of the projector as well in a in a different video um before this so yeah i i totally can relate to this i like this explanation i am down okay uh i don't need to watch part two i'm okay with this <laughs> I'm telling myself, Teddy, you're one of those guys that never watches part two. They hate you, Teddy. They hate you. Uh, portals. <laughs> the moon is empty. You can see on the new moon, you can see a ring and there's black and you can see it's a hole. You, clearly, it's a hole. You go through it. The moon is not a piece of rock, but it is a plasma, a plasma phenomenon, a cosmic plasma. Uh, and that... This fact will eventually be confirmed. I made certain predictions which were already confirmed in 1958. If the moon is a plasma, no man will ever land on it. The soft landing attempts will all fail. And the, the Americans and Russians are thinking of landing men on it. Oh, well, that will never happen. Will never happen. Oh, you're telling me there's no moon there? There is. There but is. It's not a sli it's not a solid object. Is that what is that? Am, I mean, not solid as we know solid. It's it's a more attenuated transcendental material. Atoms can act differently when they're in a different dimension. This it's transcendent. What you are seeing there is the dance of the gods, the moon, the sun. These are gods. They are gods. They are archangels. The Jews, they'll tell you in Kabbalah, they'll tell you the moon is Raphael, Mercury is Gabriel, etc. The sun is Michael. This went from the moon uh, being plasma -esque. And who was that? A scientist? Who was that guy? It's like, no one will ever land on the moon. And then this guy's like, they're gods, which I can see that reference because, like, star beings are sometimes referred to as gods. And even aliens say hey, they came from the stars. Anyway, regardless, yeah, quite different view. I never anticipated it wasn't a physical thing that you could land on. And now the whole like, hey, we've been lying about the whole space narrative really says a lot now. Really says a lot. <laughs> hmm.
What are they really trying to hide from us about the space? I'm ready. Whatever it is, I'm ready. Just let it happen. Just bring it on. Just tell us. Just tell us who's going to be the guy that breaks the news. That's what I want to know. Who's going to tell us first? Be like, guys, so, you know, we made the Space Force. You know, everyone was like, hey, what's the need? Well, here it all is. Is it going to be our president? Who's going to be the actual whistleblower here? I, and I want to be like full public acceptance here. Not just like us explore the weird guys. Just believe it. I want everyone to be like, yep, yep, now. There is no denying. Yep, we never landed there. It was all hocus pocus. And <laughs> all right, let's keep it going. These were seen over San Diego last night. Sarah, get out here. I've got two different angles of this. What the? F what is that? Sarah, get out here. seen anything like this before? No, the entry was weird too. Oh my god. Whoa! <laughs> Those are spaceships, dude. I don't know if they're spaceships. I've I've seen something like this before. Um, and it was like uh, parachuters or skydivers at, at night that uh, have like flares on their uh, uniforms and they do like this type of aerial acrobatic stuff and even near the end on the second view when the lights became extinguished and stuff I'm still kind of feeling like maybe there is a explanation that it is real people that are just skydiving out and doing these formations and their flares turn on and off and extinguish. And that's basically what's happening. But at the same time, my other explore the weird brain go, Daddy, you're looking at aliens and that's basically what it is. So <laughs> stop telling yourself it's something else. It's just aliens and UFOs and they're landing, Daddy. They've landed. That's This is all real. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. I love my other self. I really do. All right. Um, yeah, let's keep it going. I'm not afraid of what happens after I die. Yes. I'm afraid of how I will die. Well, how do you imagine that you will die that seems so fearful? I don't know. I, I don't know how I'm going to die. So it, it scares me, the idea of, say, maybe pain or... So you are saying that you simply prefer not to experience pain. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. That you would like to die simply and easily. Yeah. All right. Well, then go ahead and do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What is it that you believe will determine that transition yeah and i think that's maybe it is that i perhaps i think that it's set up for me like it's something that is inevitable and when that happens i so you understand that you set it up yes yeah yeah <laughs> so do you believe that you chose a particularly nasty way to die well i i see other i don't think anyone comes in saying i want to die like this Oh, but sometimes they do, because it depends on what purpose that serves. Now, yes, it's true. For the most part, people may forget that they have a choice and have made a choice. And so they may just simply let it run its course and experience the idea of pain. But since you're asking the question, that obviously means you have some conscious recognition that it's possible to change that. Yes? Or you wouldn't be asking the question. You wouldn't even consider the possibility that you might be able to consider something different. So the fact that you can ask the question is usually an indication that you can choose right now a way that would work better for you. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So how would you like to transition? In your I'm... sleep or floating in a pool? <laughs> or... Like just peaceful, just like yes, real chill. Right. Yeah. Well, then, again, there is nothing preventing that. If you believe that 
It doesn't really serve you if there's no lesson to be learned that you can't learn in life by experiencing the idea of a painful transition, then there's no need to experience it that way. Yes? And remember, in that sense, death is really just like waking up from a dream because physical reality is a dream. You do understand that you're in spirit right now, yes? Okay. None of you leave spirit. That's your natural state. You are just dreaming that you've left. That's what physical reality is. A portion of your greater being in non-physical reality is pretending that it's no longer in the spirit realm. But you are there right now, the greater portion of you. And this portion that is seemingly the whole of your identity as a physical being to the version of you that is in spirit right now is just about the same as the size of your fingernail. That's your physical being to the spirit that you are. Do you understand? Mm. So just like you wake up in the morning from a dream, yes? Is that painful? <laughs> no. Well, then same idea. You're just going to wake up and go, oh, that seemed so real. But now I know that was just a dream and this is who I actually am. Yes? Yeah. Does that sound more preferable? <laughs> yeah. All right. Then it can be that way for you. Unless, of course, you choose to be a masochist. Yeah, I'd prefer... And feel like the end of your life. Is that something you believe you need? No. All right. Then there is no need to experience that. Yes? Yeah. Can be over in a blink. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> if you really are actually at any point in your life done, all you have to do is lie down and close your eyes and say, I'm ready to go. And then count to 10. If you can open your eyes at the end, you're not done. <laughs> Because it can be that easy if you actually are done. You can just say, I'm done. Lie down, close your eyes, and go. Yes? Yeah. Is this helping? Yeah, it's helping. Oh, all right. You feel a little bit more relaxed about your death? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. If you want, we will be happy to show up at the moment of your death with pitchforks. <laughs> You could show up, but maybe no pitchforks, just, you know, a friendly hello. But we would only do that to make you laugh. <laughs> and that way you get to die laughing. There you go. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs>
that moves and moves and moves. This laser will burn everything except for things that are blue. I feel like we have seen things like this in other videos where things that are blue are just untouched, unfazed, not burning. You know, was it the fires in Hawaii? Where else have we seen? We've seen in so many things where it's like, hey, was this a laser attack? Why are the blue top things not getting burnt? Oh my God, are people really doing this? I want proof. I want proof that the, that people are doing this and I may do it myself. I'm gonna turn everything blue, Teddy. Turn everything blue. <laughs> Imagine the amount of people start getting up there. I need to get on my roof, Linda, don't listen. Don't worry about it, I'm paint the entire roof. It's gonna be all right. We don't need new shingles. We're gonna paint it royal blue. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, I love this. I love this. You know, I'm I'm camouflaging uh, if I can. If the time and the need is needed, I will definitely be doing this. Um, as of right now, I think I am good. Uh, we'll, we'll go with that narrative. And, you know, if death does come, as Bashar said, it's going to be peaceful. It's going to be painless. It's going to be great. <laughs> I'm ready for anything at this point. Um, yes, guys, that is it. Did you enjoy today's video? Was it was it entertaining? I know these are getting a little longer. Are we enjoying the longer content? I'm hearing yes throughout. I'm glad to hear that. I was very worried that the analytics would be like, nope, too long, Teddy. They don't want to watch it that long. But it, realistically, it seems like longer is good. Longer is good indeed. Um, all right, so that is what I had for today. I will see you guys next time. Stay safe and goodbye.